Good morning. It's Wednesday the 23rd of September. Um, it's becoming quite a nice day here. I've been for a walk this morning uh, with a neighbour and her dog. We went for a walk around the field and along the railway line and a bit up paths here and there. There are so many walks in this area. It's just stunning. It's a beautiful place to live. I am hugely blessed. Thank you, God. Um, I know that there are others who don't have these wonderful privileges that I now have. Um, yeah, I just, I just thank God. I just thank the Lord. Um, I'm just overflowing with thanks and praise this morning. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Um, I know that for, as I say, some people don't have these privileges, but do you know, there's something always to give thanks for every day. You've got up this morning. <laughs> the fact that we've got up this morning, the fact that um, today we're able to rejoice in a God who loves us is fantastic. Um, the, there can be such simple things to thank God for. Um, I think I've mentioned Anne Voskamp before. Um, she talks about a thousand gifts there's always a blessing that we can see if we look it's about our attitude isn't it if our attitude is right then we we're thankful um sometimes we wake up oh have we got out of bed on the wrong side whatever that expression mean means i can't imagine getting out of bed on the wrong side what's the right side of the bed <laughs> um but that expression means that you know we've got up a bit grumpy and if we have that grump on, if you have that grump on you this morning, then I ask you to take it off. Just take it off. Say, okay, grump, I'm not having you today. In Jesus' name, I take you off and I lay you aside and I put on a garment of praise instead. Wouldn't that be good? Okay, that's my advice for today. Put on the garment of praise. On Sunday, no, sorry, on Saturday, I had the wonderful joy of um, joining a couple in holy matrimony to actually perform that service for them, to, to perform that wonderful sacrament of marriage. Um, and in my address to them, I talked about putting on love, put on love in the morning as an undergarment, <laughs> or before your undergarments, um, gird yourself with love. And I, I'm saying today, may it be the garment of praise that you put on today, because things will inevitably be different if you do. Your outlook, your understanding, the way that you see things will be different. I'm concerned because I am seeing all sorts of things in my glasses. They're reflections of things. I think I'm going to have to just put up with them, aren't they? I'm sure you probably haven't even noticed before, and now you have. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've highlighted to you something that's reflecting off my glasses. <laughs> okay, Lindy, you have a lot to read. I often talk to myself, don't I? Right, lot to read today. Um, it, it's this stand section is a, a bit more um, meaty. I think, than what we've had before, at least for me. Um, and I'm sure it is for you, that maybe we found the coming and sitting back into Christ Jesus, knowing who we are in him, who we are in, where we are in heavenly realms and seated in that place. Maybe we found that easier to take a hold of. And then the walking it out, walking out our lives with Jesus, hand in hand with him, um, in step with the Holy Spirit. Uh, maybe that's uh, been an easier thing to take a hold of. But when it comes to this standing, the, the spiritual battle, the battle that we're in, um, is, is possibly a, a more difficult one to take a hold of. But as we work through Sit, Walk, Stand, here we are. Here's the plug for the day. Sit, Walk, Stand by Watchman Lee. Please buy the book. As we've worked our way through and as we continue to work our, through this, our way through there's not an awful lot left. Um, chew over it. This is why I get the book, so you can read it again. So you can get a greater understanding maybe of what it is that it's saying. 
and apply it. The application to our lives is the most important thing. We can read, we can read the word, we can read the Bible from cover to cover every year. We can do it, you know, we can do chunks here and there and enjoy it and um, do different reading plans. And there's so many different ways that we can read the Bible. But, you know, if we're not applying what we read and what we hear, um, good sermons, whatever, if we don't apply it to our lives, then actually... It's like a wisp of wind that blows and it's gone. It has to apply to our lives, apply it to our hearts and the way that we live. So, yeah, I'll just pray, shall I? Then I will continue. Father, would you help us? We need your help. We need you, Jesus, to help us by your spirit to, to apply everything that we learn of your word to our lives. I ask, Holy Spirit, that anything that I say or that I read today which isn't of, um, of you, if it's not of your spirit, if it's not what you're wanting to speak to our hearts, would you help it to drop away? Help us to let go of it. But Lord, everything that is rich, everything which is true and honourable and trustworthy and good, would you help us to apply that to our lives? Holy Spirit, we welcome you. As you've welcomed us into the Father's presence, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Jesus, speak to us. Father, embrace us as we read today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, right. And I'm going to read. Oh, no, I wanted to turn up Ephesians. Forgive me. I'm just going to find that. I'm going to be reading out of the ESV, English Standard Version, um, instead of. Let me put a marker in there. Instead of the version in the book. Okay, I think we're there. Let's turn that one. Okay, instead of the version in the book, sorry, I'm rambling on. Um, just because the wording, the understanding of the language is a little bit easier for our ears. But here we are. This section's called In His Name. So we've talked about how Christ is our victor and that we are victorious. But that our situations may not alter and the lion may continue to roar as loudly as ever. But this is not all, says Watchman Nee. Ephesians 6 is concerned with more than the personal side of our warfare. It has to do with the work of God entrusted to us. The utterance of the mystery of the gospel of which Paul has already had much to say as we would have read in chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. For this, it arms us now with the sword of the word and its companion weapon, prayer. So this is Ephesians 6, verses 17 to 20. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication, to that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all of the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, <clears throat> that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. I want to say something more about this warfare in its relation to our work for God. For here we may encounter a difficulty. It is true, on the one hand, that our Lord Jesus is seated far above all rule and authority and that all things have been put in subjection under his feet. Ephesians 1, 21 and 22. Clearly, it is in the light of this completed victory that we are to give thanks always for all things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Chapter 5 verse 20. Yet, 
On the other hand, we have to admit that we do not yet see all things subject to him. There are still, as Paul says, hosts of wicked spirits in the heavenly places. Dark, evil powers behind this world's rulers, occupying territory that is rightly his. How far are we correct in calling this a defensive warfare? We do not want to be falsely presumptive. When therefore, and under what conditions, are we... Sorry, I'm going to read that again, I said the wrong word. When, therefore, and under what conditions are we justified in accompanying, in occupying territory that is outwardly the enemy's and holding it in the name of the Lord Jesus? Let us take the word of God to help us here. What does it tell us about prayer and action in the name? Consider first the following two passages. The first one is Matthew 18, verses 18 to 20. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And I'm going to add in there um, something from the footnotes. I'm going to read it again with the adjustment that's made in the footnotes in the ESV Bible. Truly I say to you, whatever you ha whatever shall have been bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you has been loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Sorry, that sounded a bit clumsy. And then John 16, verses 23, 24 and 26. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say, I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf. I'm going to go on, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I thought it was important to say why it is that Jesus says he won't ask. It's because we can ask, because Father loves us. None can be saved. Back to the book. None can be saved without knowing the name of Jesus. And none can be effectively used of God without knowing the authority of that name. The Apostle Paul makes it clear that the name to which Jesus alludes is the above passage, in the above passage, is not simply the name by which he was known while here among men. To be sure, it is that very self-same name of his humanity, but it is that name invested now with the title and authority given to him by God, after he had become obedient to death. Read Philippians 2 verses 6 to 10 in your own time. It is the outcome of his sufferings, the name of his exaltation and glory, and today it is in that name, which is above every name, that we gather and that we ask of God. This distinction is made not by Paul alone, but already by Jesus himself in the second passage quoted above. Hitherto you have asked nothing. In that day you shall ask. For the disciples, that day will differ greatly from the now of verse 22, which I'll remind you of, if I can find it very quickly. Verse 22. No, I'm in the wrong chapter. Don't worry, I'll leave it there. Something we do not have now 
they will receive then. I've confused it all, haven't I? For the disciples, that day will differ greatly from the now of verse 22. Something they do not have now, they will receive then, and have received it. And having received it, they will use it. That something is the authority that goes with his name. The something that they don't have, but they will receive, and that we have, is the something which is the authority that goes with his name. Our eyes must be opened to see the mighty change wrought by the ascension. The name of Jesus certainly establishes the identity of the one in the throne with the carpenter of Nazareth. But it goes further than that. It represents now the power and dominion given to him by God. A power and a dominion before which every knee in heaven and earth and beneath the earth must bow. Even the Jewish leaders recognised that there could be this kind of significance in a mere name when they inquired of the disciples concerning the healing of the lame man. By what power or in what name have you done this? Acts 4 verse 7. Today, the name calls us, tells us that God has committed all authority to his son, so that in the very name itself there is power. But further, we must note in scripture the recurring expression, in the name. That is to say, the use to which the apostles in fact put that name. It is not only that he has such a name, but that we are to use it. In three passages in his last discourse, the Lord Jesus repeats the words, Ask in my name. John 14, verse 13 and 14, and then John 15, verse 16, and then John 16, verses 23 to 26. Not only is it his, but it is given among men, Acts 4.12. If we do not know our part in it, we suffer great loss. And that's all I'm reading for today. That was quite a long passage and actually I've stumbled over a lot of it and I hope I haven't lost you. But it's in his name. It is in the name of Jesus that we have the authority to overcome and to stand firm. In his name we're able to maintain the ground that he has already won for us. It's in his name, it's in Christ Jesus that we are the victors. It's in him. It's not in our own power, in our own ability. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus that we are able to stand. There's going to be more about the power of Jesus' name as we, as we um, meet tomorrow. But... For today, I think it's right for us to know where this authority comes from. He's given the authority to us. All of the authority is his, but he's placed it in us as believers, as followers of Jesus. We have authority, which is a higher authority than what we the authority that we see around us as i just think of the the first minister mark drayford yesterday and, and boris johnson speaking about the restrictions that are being imposed which are having to be imposed upon us and you know we have to follow that authority that they have because we have placed that authority in their hands by electing them into their post well 
Jesus has given us a greater authority, authority which is um, far above and it, yeah, as in it's not a higher authority. I'm not saying that we are higher than those who rule the nation. Actually, we have to come under their authority. But our authority is of God. It is of heaven. The things that are bound will have been bound in heaven. You know, we bind things in the heavenly realms. We release things in the heavenly realms because that's where we're seated in Christ. There's something here that will enrich our prayer lives, our intercessions. If we take a hold of the authority that we have in Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that your authority is higher and above all authorities. Lord, I thank you and I bless you. We bless you that the authority that you've given to us is more than enough to overcome the wiles of the enemy, the taunts of his voice, the accusations that he he throws at us. It's more than enough to overcome the weakness that we have in our lives, to overcome the things that have happened us to us in the past, the words that have been spoken over us. It is more than enough to bind and loose because it's the authority of heaven. Encourage us today, Lord, to live in that authority, not in a bolshy way, but in a positive way, in an affirming way, in a way that reminds us of who we are in Christ Jesus. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. I look forward to tomorrow, I so look forward to tomorrow, to being with you again. Pray that you'll join me and that you'll be blessed. Have an awesome day, awesome God-filled day today. Love you. Bye.